Hey guys, welcome to the Beetle Shelf again. Um, today we have a few things we're going to go through and check. Um, we have four Dynasties to tie us uh, larvae to check up on. Um, that's the Eastern Hercules beetle. It's found in North America. And then um, I'm going to show you all the biggest uh, Lucanus Mazama that I have uh, I found yet, just as a little um, a little bonus to the video. So uh, we're going to start off probably with our Lucanus Mazama here. And uh, once things kind of get into checking and changing the substrate for uh, the larvae, I'll uh, have an overhead cam for you guys to see what I'm doing. So this is our um, our big Lucanus Mazama. You can see him on my hand. He's pretty massive. We're gonna look him, look at him underneath our. Uh, our light here, he's pretty squirmy, so we'll see if he likes to stay put. There he is running around. Come on, come on back here. Run back through again. Nope, he's not liking it. Let's see if I can hold him in my finger for us. Come on. Okay. Here we go, beautiful male. Tell it's a male by the size of the head compared to uh, the thorax and also the very large mandibles that he has. It's very important to classify and to distinguish uh, male versus female by the size of the head versus the thorax because um, sometimes the, um, the mandibles on males can be very small, so it's uh, the only factor you can use to differentiate is the head size. So we're gonna put him back. I measured him earlier at 3.81 centimeters. Um, the biggest I've heard of of a Lucanus Mazama is 3.9 centimeters, so he's very massive. Um, yeah, he's missing uh, his two back tarsi, the little claws on the end of his feet, um, probably from fights and whatnot, but um, yeah, pretty awesome. So, okay, let's get started into checking our substrate. We'll go down uh, so you can see here, bring over our light. Okay. So, like I said earlier, this is the Dynasties Titius. I got them from my friend Peter Clausen, who sells them. We're gonna have a look at this so far. So, um, the, let's move this light so you we can all see it better. So um, this substrate is maybe three inches deep on um, this pretty good container. There's only one larvae in here. Um, the substrate is made up of ground, white, rotten uh, wood, some compost, and then uh, smashed up and baked uh, rotten leaves. So let's take a look at before we get started, just what wood I'm using. I'll put it underneath our micro cam here. This is an example of the white ro white rotten wood. Uh, it's really, really soft. So I'm able to take it right here and just very easily break it apart. And it kind of feels um, very squishy. You can see I can kind of squeeze it between my fingers and it crushes, breaks very easily. So I'll take this and um, grind it up into a very fine powder. Um, you can use um, like a wood chipper um, or just do it by hand very tediously uh, to get it into this very fine looking, um, very fine looking substrate. So we'll show it here on the camera. So those kind of more brown chunks are the um, white rotten oak. So, okay, uh, let's check this out. This is, um, let's check the label here. He was L2, it's the second instar when we checked him last on the 10th of July. Um, we put two dog food pellets in the substrate to supplement his diet just with extra protein, helps him grow faster and bigger. 
So uh, we'll see where, we'll see how he's doing. So very softly shake this out. Um, don't see too much frass. Frass is what we call the uh, excrement of the larvae. Um, don't see too much of that. So the substrate's still good, and it um, it smells like a forest, um, which is good. You want it to smell like a forest. Uh, if it smells, let me get this twig out of here. If it smells like um, like a uh, a lion pen at the zoo or something kind of gross like that, then it'd be time to change it out. So we're going to kind of squeeze the container a little bit here. Um, kind of shake him out. Nope, oh, there he is. Okay. Here he comes right there. Okay. Great. So the substrate is still, uh, it's not dry, but you want it to uh, be able to compact in your hand and form a clump, um, but not drip water. So what I mean by that is if I grab this handful of substrate, if I squeeze it and it forms a clump, then it's wet enough. But if I squeeze it and it drips, then it's too wet. So right there, I squeezed it and uh, it didn't clump up. So we're gonna have to put a bit of more, a bit more uh, water in here. Let's check out this, this little guy. He's gotten a lot bigger, um, a lot bigger, but he still does not have big spiracles. Now I'll move over underneath the micro camera. So that's our larvae. He's got some little wood chips he's holding on to. He, let's see, how long would he be? I would say probably one, two, I'd say maybe six, six centimeters all the way across, maybe five. Um, let's get this little wood chunk out of here. So you see the spiracles are these little brown dots along the side and those are what they breathe from. They breathe from those spiracles. Oh, there he just pooped. Um, so here, this is a good chance to show you what the, the frass looks like. So let's pull this wood out of here. So this is an example of uh, a frass pellet. So, okay, um, you can also tell it's, you can tell it's an L2 because of the small spiracle size. If they're L3, the spiracles would be much larger. And you can see his head capsule is very dark, but it's small compared to, um, compared to the body around it, which means that um, it's, um, it, it molted a long time ago and it's grown a lot since its last molt because the head capsule only grows during uh, the molt. So you see he's trying to eat a little bit there. Okay, so he's doing great. I'm gonna mark on his container. Um, this is the 27th of July, still an L2, it's all right, L2. And then um, we're gonna say, Maybe just in, we're just gonna go with uh, his little diameter. That's a bit easier to measure the diameter. Um, we're gonna say go from the eight here to three, so one, two and a half diameter, two and a half centimeter diameter. And if I had a scale, I would weigh him too. That's a better uh, way to determine their their growth is the scale. Uh, and then I'm also going to mark that I need to, uh, I dampened the substrate. Dampened the sub. Okay. So we'll leave him right there for right now. Um, let's I have this little spray bottle. We're just going to mist it a little bit, get it nice and wet. Uh, and then as we moisten it and kind of turn it over a little bit, spread the moisture throughout. We're just gonna test the dampness. So here's my test of if it's got the right moisture content. We squeeze it and does it form a ball? A little bit, so we'll do it. We're almost there, we'll do a little bit more. Um, sure, Larby's good, he's still good. 
Uh, another thing to that should be that should be fine. They uh they don't drink water. They get water from the food that they eat. So uh, oh, it's a good amount of frass in here. Actually, that's a good thing. He's eating. So we'll squeeze it. Kind of forms a clump a little bit more. Um, another thing to check on these larvae um, is whether or not they have mites. And you can check because usually the mites will be, let me pick them up and uh, kind of blow them off a little bit. Okay, so the mites will be along the spiracles and they look just like a little uh, orange dust. But we don't see anything so far, it's really clean. So it's a good, healthy larvae. Um, I'd say they usually uh, take about eight weeks uh, to get into their um, their third instar. I'd say he probably has another three or four weeks to go. So um, just looking over the substrate again, we have squeeze it, doesn't drip water, but it clumps up pretty nicely. Um, it's pretty dry here in Utah, so we're just going to mist it a little bit more just to be safe. Mist the inside of the container a little bit and then um, pop them back in. So, okay. Um, I'm just going to put some of the substrate back in. And then I'm going to compact it a little bit. Make sure you compact it before. You put them back in there. You want them to have a. You don't want to crush them, you know. So we'll do that. Put a little bit more on top, and then um, come back a little bit more. And I'm gonna put a little hole in here. Kind of put a little hole with my finger, and uh, it's kind of hard to see on the camera. And then I'm just going to plop him. Uh, Right back in that hole and cover him back up with the substrate. Okay, very nice. Well, that's, that's good. Um, hasn't molted to L3 yet, but is still very healthy, very active. Um, yeah, looking pretty good. So we'll just pop a uh, his substrate back in the container. Cover them up. Okay, great. Cool. Okay. Compact it just a little bit, not too much. Not enough to hurt him, but okay. And then I just put a few tiny little holes in this container, uh, is all. Just maybe, I have uh, four right now on the lid. Four little holes in the corners. So right there, right there, and around. So seal him back up, and uh, we'll check. we'll check one more. Check one more today while we're at it, and uh, then we'll call it good. And I just will repeat this same process for each larvae. So it's kind of dry. That's not super good. There he is. Still an L2. Mist the inside, get it nice and damp for him. Compact it a little bit at the bottom. I'll show you sometimes you can tell if it's a male or not by looking at a small dot on 
one of its segments down here. Um, oop, he's not happy. So sometimes there'll be a small dot around here. Um, I, I think that's it right there. You can kind of see it. I think that will be a male then. Um, diameter we have from the probably again another two and a half diameter. Mark that on the this is 727 2.5 centimeter diam L2 and dampened sub. Okay, I'll check this guy probably back in another uh, three weeks to a month. We'll check him again. So I'm just gonna moisten up our uh, substrate a little bit. Um, really get it nice and moist. You have to kind of adjust this to how fast your containers lose humidity and also um, the humidity of your local uh, environment. So, a little bit more, that should be good. So here in uh, Utah, we have very, very low humidity. So I uh, like to keep it really damp in the substrate. Not really damp, but you know, I like to make sure it's good. So we'll pop some in there, pop a bit more. Compact it down and then make a little hole for him. Pop him in the hole. He again didn't look like he had any mites on him. The spiracles were clean, um, there was no issue there, so that's great. Um, to prevent mites like this, if you do see them, you bake your substrate at, uh, obviously take the larvae out of the substrate, you don't want to kill it. Take the, the substrate and bake it in a, a, a low tray in your oven for maybe 20, 20 minutes on 200, 250 Fahrenheit. Um, and that'll kill any of the mites or other little organisms we have in here. Don't see a whole lot of other life, which is good. We want it just to be the larvae and our healthy substrate. So, okay. Awesome, compact a tiny bit more on the top and just for good measure, we'll missed it with a little bit. Okay, great. Okay, well, um, that has been changing and checking, not changing, but checking our substrate um, for our Dynasties to tie us, uh larvae. They are beautiful, a beautiful beetle when they're grown. Um, so we wanna make sure they're healthy and big. Um, if you have any questions about uh, your own larvae or their health, um, leave me a comment or, or send me a personal message and we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.